write down the equation of the asymptote of f that is 4.1 we have f of x being equals to 2 to the power x minus 4 we're looking for the asymptote of this function let me show you something in order for f of x to be equals to minus 4 we would need 2 to the power of x to be equals to 0 and that is actually impossible we get very close to zero but we never touch zero so that tells us that our asymptote is at y is equals to minus four because our graph cannot charge y is equals to minus four because t to the power x will never be equals to zero we just get close to zero but we never actually get there 4.2 that is where uh, the idea of a limit actually comes in anyway stories let's determine the coordinates of b we are told that a and what's happening we're told that a and b are y and x intercepts respectively so a is the y intercept so x equals to zero and we have some y and b is the x-intercept and y is equals to zero f of x is equals to q to the power x minus four if we substitute the coordinates of b x and zero in attempt to find x we're gonna have zero being equals to q to the power of x minus four if we take minus four to the left hand side uh, we're going to have 2 to the power x being equals to 4. But we can write 4 as 2 to the power of 2. It is easy to see that x is equals to 2. So the coordinates of b, we have 2 and 0. Let's go ahead and do 4.3. In 4.3, we're supposed to determine the equation of k, a straight line passing through a and b in the form k of x is equals to well if it is a straight line then this is mx plus c we need the gradient after finding the gradient we can substitute b or a to find c how can we find the gradient we need two points well for b we know that we have two and zero if we can find the coordinates of a we're going to be able to determine the gradient of k of x so the coordinates of a we have x is equals to 0 and it's a unknown y value. If we substitute that into f of x, f of x is equals to 2 to the power x minus 4. We're going to get y being equals to 2 to the power 0 minus 4. Any number to the power 0 is 1, so we have 1 minus 4, which is minus 3. So the coordinates of a, we have 0 and minus 3. If we go ahead and find the gradient, uh, we'll get y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Uh, we have b and a. If we take a as our second point, we're going to have minus 3 minus 0. The y value of a minus the y value of b divided by 0 minus 2. So this is just equals to 3 divided by 2. So that is the gradient of k of x we can say that k of x is equals to 3 divided by 2x plus c let's substitute either a or b to find the value of c if we substitute b uh, b is 2 and 0 we're gonna have 0 being equals to 3 divided by 2 multiplied by 2 plus c 2 and 2 cancels out we have 2 being equals to 3 plus c it is obvious c is equals to minus 3. So we can conclude and say that k of x is equals to 3 divided by 2x minus 3. Is this equation true? Is it correct? Let's find out. Let's substitute uh, the x value of a. Uh, if we substitute 0, we're going to get 3 divided by 2 multiplied by 0 minus 3. Uh, so this is just equals to minus 3. Well, it seems like it works out. Uh, let's go ahead and do 4.4. 4. 
So in 4.4, we want to calculate the vertical distance between k and f at x is equal to 1. The vertical distance between k and f. Right, we are looking for the distance, not the displacement. Okay, so if we're looking for the displacement, it would matter whether we're seeing uh, f of x minus k of x. But if it is the distance, it doesn't matter. Even if we get a negative value, we would just quote it as a positive value because a distance is not a vector but it is a scalar anyway let's get on but if you connect a and b you should be able to see that k of x is above f of x between a and b and that is where x is equals to one lines x is equals to one is between a and b so the distance will be equals to k of x minus f of x well k of 1 minus f of 1 because that's the point we're interested in so k of x we're gonna have 3 divided by 2 we are interested at x equals to 1 minus 3 minus f of x 2 to the power 1 minus 4 so 3 divided by 2 multiplied by 1 that is 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. So we have 1.5 minus 3. That should be minus 1.5. So we have minus 1.5. Minus 2 to the power 1. 2 to the power 1 is 2. 2 minus 4, it is minus 2. So we have minus 1.5 plus 2, which will be plus 0.5 units so that is the distance between k of x and f of x let's move to 5.5 in 5.5 not 5.5 but 4.5 we're supposed to write down the equation of g if it is given that g of x is equal to f of x plus 4 so g of x will be equal to what is f of x this is 2 to the power x minus 4 plus 4 minus 4 plus 4 so g of x is just equals to 2 to the power x right and 4.6 let's write down the domain of let's write down the domain of g inverse so the range of g of x is equals to the domain of g of x so what is the range of g of x if g of x is equals to 2 to the power x well the range y is an element of zero to infinity it cannot touch zero but it cannot touch infinity also we know that for sure so this is the range of g of x so the domain of g inverse x will be an element of zero to infinity that's how it works that's all we have to do and 4.7 we actually need to find the equation of g inverse g of x is equals to 2 to the power x to find the inverse you swap x and y and make y the subject of the formula in this case uh, we're gonna have x being equals to 2 to the power y if we want to bring y down we have to take a log on both sides uh, if we do that we're gonna have y a log of 2 that is a log law you are allowed to do that what you want to do what you want to do at this point is you divide both sides by log of 2 we're going to have y being equals to log of x divided by log of 2 what is log of x divided by log of 2 that is log of x base 2 